Hello and welcome to Guy Larger Gaming. My name is Temko and this is Hoppico. Developed by LaserDog and published by Merge Games, it is a precision based minimalist graphic style platformer. A Twitch based speed running platformer. A platformer where you don't actually move your character as much as jumping around from, well, platform to platform. The game is a unique combination of minimalistic Twitch based gameplay, learning muscle memory and minuscule maps where you spend seconds in, and all of that accompanied by a very intense chiptune soundtrack. But is the game any good? Well, we're gonna ask that question right now. Before we do that though, we're gonna head into some options and talk a little bit about PC performance and settings. If you're not so inclined to join us on this journey, there is a description on screen where you can press and skip straight on ahead to the gameplay segment. For the rest of us, let's go ahead and dive into the settings options. Windowed and full screen mode are available and the resolution full screen obviously resets back to your regular resolution, which is all good and dandy. There is quite a few resolutions available under the sun, though there are some issues with weird resolution types that are not the normal aspect ratio, so be aware of that. But there is one issue though that really hobbles this game's performance on the PC, and that is the fact that the game doesn't constrain mouse to window. Now I've had a contact with the developers regarding this, and I'll explain later why this is such a big issue, and they are working on a fix as we speak. But for now, that is an issue. They also added this little gamepad switch button where you can switch between the gamepad or the PS4 controller for the Xbox or PS4, which is pretty interesting and well put together. I like that little bit of extra styling, though it doesn't really add any value. What I would prefer to have is rebindable keys. Now you might say, wait a minute, minimalist? How many keys does this game actually have? And the answer is really just two. And you don't really need any more for this game. But the fact that these two keys are combined, and they are not the greatest of keys in my opinion, does really add a little bit of annoyance when you're controlling the game in a game that is all about precision controls. The next issue I have is the music and sound effect, not only having 3 bars for music and volume. I'm not sure if it's too much to ask that you get a 10 bar or a 1 to 100 bar slider option here. I mean, it's basic functionality I expect in any PC game, so the fact that it doesn't have that is kind of annoying. And then you have the in-game HUD and screen flashes, and you can even change which stick you use for aiming on your controller, but you have no such option for the mouse and keyboard, which is a bit of a shame. Overall, a lackluster options menu, though not abysmal. There are some things here you might want to have, such as in-game HUD or screen flashes, as well as the resolution options available, pretty diverse. But the lack of rebindable keys and the lack of any other functionality, such as colorblind mode or anything like that, does put a damper in it, as well as the lackluster music and volume controls. Having said all of that though, the game runs phenomenally well, and as it should, being a very low game in terms of system requirements, anything else would have been unacceptable, so that is perfectly fine. The game also is very smooth, it hasn't had any issues with performance, any issues with crashes, or any bugs I've encountered, outside of the constraining mouse to window key, and well, that's really it, the game is exactly what it is, and it does so quite well. I also like that the game has on the fly detection whether or not you're using a controller or a mouse and keyboard. So if you're playing the game and you want to switch which one you're using, the game detects that flawlessly and works perfectly well each and every time. And that is something too many games don't have, so I do approve of that. The game works very well with mouse and keyboard. It works great with a controller, the Steam controller as well as the Xbox controls I've tried all work phenomenally well. So no complaints on that regard at all. Having said that, let's go ahead and dive into the game and tell you what exactly I have issues with in regards to the not constraining mouse to window, and some of the other issues I've encountered with the game, as well as some of the amazing stuff I have encountered. Let's go ahead and dive in. So going into a match of Hapiko, each level is divided into 5 mini levels, and each of these levels opens up the next level and then you have a bunch of worlds where you go through in varying degrees of increasing complexity. What I'm showing now is one of the levels I have been playing, and the game really is this fast. This is not sped up, this is not augmented in any way, this is the game naturally well. But you can see the game has a very minimalistic art style, and I want to talk about that first, because there are some very good things regarding this, but there are also some negatives I have with this art style. First, primarily, the very good stuff is it is very, very clear. Because there is so little clutter on screen, due to the variety of moving objects and the variety of obstacles, and the speed of the game when you're playing at, because you'll see me complete some of these levels in 1, 2, 3 seconds, and that is a lot of movement, and if there's clutter on screen, that movement destroys any experience you might have with the game. Thankfully, the game does no such thing, and the performance in regards to the clutter and in terms of clarity of movement is phenomenal. The game has one goal and that is a speedy, twitch based, muscle memory forced platformer and it does that phenomenally well in terms of its art style. The minimalist art style on the other hand has one issue though, is that because of the abstract graphics and because of the speed at which things happen, 
and everything twitching and moving and snapping back and forth in cohesion with the music is that it is very heavy on the senses. I have had serious issues with the game in regards with having headaches, in regards to being able to keep focus. My eyes would really start to get tired after playing for like 20 minutes. And this is a personal thing, obviously, and not everybody would have this, but I still felt important enough to say that's something I normally don't have with games. And the fact that this game had that, it really means it's very, very cluttered in terms of what is going on on screen. And even though the graphical style is very clean, and even though the amount of objects on screen and the way things are paced is very unique and very good, the amount of flashy objects, the amount of spasming things on screen is still very heavy on the eyes, especially when you're, like I said, running through a level in two or three seconds in certain cases. Other than that though, all the objects you are encountering are very well defined. There is no ambiguity in what you're seeing. If you see a platform with a very specific look, that's because it's a glass platform that will slide with you. If you see a platform with a line in the middle, that's the platform with a timer on it. If you see a line with two dots on the sides, that's the platform that moves in the direction you hit it from. These things are very clearly defined. And the same really goes for all the opponents you might encounter. Moving on a line, are they shaped in a specific way? Are they positioned in a specific location? All of this is very clearly defined. And even though you'll probably die at least a bajillion times playing this game, nothing will ever surprise you. You'll only go, oh, okay, so that's the next step I have to cross. Oh, and okay, now I know what this next obstacle is and how I can get through it. This is very good. And between the audio and the way the game does its pacing with art style and the audio responding to the way you act things, if you're standing still, the music will slow down. And if you're doing really fast things, the music will really speed up. At least it feels that way. And that really provides an intense experience where you're running back and forth between these levels. Even if you're dying, it just going on, going on, going on, retrying, going on, retrying, just getting that muscle memory in place to optimize your runs. And the game does provide optimization and speedrun incentives, with many levels having shortcuts and different ways of completing them where you can really skip half a level if you know what you're doing based on aiming, based on positioning, based on just knowing when and timing things. That is excellent. But then we get to the timing part, and that is where we get to controls. And that is one of the issues I have with this game. From a mouse and keyboard perspective, the issue I have with this game is aiming. Now I don't mean aiming in the sense of, oh, I, I can't aim so I'm really bad at this. The problem is that with mouse aiming enabled, with the cursor not being constrained to window, your cursor will go out of window, and this being such a tight timing controlled game, you'll end up messing up time and time again with no fault of your own. Now switching to a controller does alleviate a little bit of this, but a controller is never as fast or as accurate as a mouse and keyboard. And you always feel hampered by the fact that you're playing on a controller when you could have been playing on a mouse and keyboard. And you'll see me die repeatedly in this video I've pre-recorded in the background because I'm playing on a controller and my aiming just isn't as accurate than I am on a keyboard. And that is a damn shame. And as I said earlier on, this is an issue the developers are actively working on. I hope it gets fixed fast. But until then, this is a major showstopper for me personally from enjoying this game. Every time I die because I notice that my controller just didn't move exactly where I wanted to because I was just a little bit too fast and I have to slow things down, that really hampers the enjoyment of the title. And when you could say, well, then slow down then, Temco. The answer to that really isn't slowing down. The game is designed around being very fast-paced, very active, very much about timing your things perfectly right and doing everything you can to get to the end as fast as possible. Talking about the game and the way it structures itself in terms of levels and progression, everything is designed to slowly introduce mechanics to you and then throw you into the deep with all these mechanics introduced. The first few levels will show you how to jump, then they will show you how glass platforms work, then they will show you how flipping platforms work, then you get cannons, and then you get moving platforms, and so on and so forth. But every time they introduce one of these things, they remove some of the other things so you can focus on that specific mechanic. And in that regard, the game has a very well put together pseudo tutorial because these aren't really tutorials and the game does have a tutorial, but it does explain certain mechanics as they come into play. The game also has a very cool way of switching aesthetics around to force a certain feeling. Suddenly making everything dark red or suddenly moving everything into a yellow does provide a very unique experience where not only can you really feel as if you're progressing because visually things become darker on the more difficult levels or they become lighter on the more unique levels. Different contrasts and different ways of performing colors, even in this very minimal style, 
do provide a very unique experience. But even there, the issues I've had with the spastic graphics resulting in some serious issues with like headaches and just being very tired on my eyes from playing the game, even after a short while, do hamper some of my enjoyment. And I would have liked to have a not as spastic mode. Having said that though, the game is very finely crafted. Each handmade level is clearly well designed. Shortcuts, different ways of speeding up the levels, different ways of creating shortcuts, different ways of moving through the levels do provide a different tire of gameplay for players that are both very good or those that are just coming new into the game and learning all the various tips and tricks. And I do foresee this game having quite a few people just optimizing routes to various levels, especially as each level is cut into five small levels. And each of these, as you can see, is one through five, and each of them has a sort of pseudo mini challenge. Once you complete all five, you get to the next one. If you die on the fifth one, you have to start over from the first one. This provides one training that you learn your muscle memory and learn mechanics. On the other hand, it provides a sort of incentive to keep on your guard that you're not only finishing a level and then, okay, I'm done with that level and never have to look back. That's it. No, because you have these five tiers in each level, it forces you to really consider, okay, am I going to take a risk with a shortcut here and have to redo all these other four previous stages? Or am I just going to go rush forward and see if I can get that mark or that speedrun opening or unlock any other bonus extras available once you get to a certain tire? I do like that quite a bit. It's a risk reward proposition that the game does fairly well. But as I said again, there are issues with the game. And one of the main issues I have is the fact that the game really is very limited. As I said, the controls are a bug and that is an issue in itself. And the developers can fix that and that is fine. But the other issue I have with the game, because it is fairly limited in scope, is the fact that once you hit round world 3, you start to see a lot of repetition in terms of what you can expect. The levels become more difficult and more challenging, but nothing new is introduced any further. And yes, there are some cool sort of pod racing aspects to it and there are some other cool not really jumping platform things to it, but all of that really is only a small distraction from the fact that yes, you'll be jumping from platform to platform, to cannon to cannon, flipping to flipping platform, down into a glass wall where you have to jump back again before you get crushed. The levels become more complex, the level become more timing oriented, the levels become less forgiving. All of that is true, but they don't become any more interesting. The art style is set from the start, and it doesn't really introduce anything new. It doesn't really unlock new stuff for you to do outside of more challenging levels. So unless you really like what you're seeing on screen, this is exactly what the game has to offer and nothing else. And that is fine in and of itself, it's a very focused indie title, but if you don't like what you're seeing, the game doesn't really offer anything extra. The game is really focused on speedruns though, so if you are into speedrunning and if you are into precision based gameplay, then this is definitely a unique game provided you can get around the very busy art style versus very busy movement on screen that really provides a headache on me, but your mileage may vary. Overall, a very enjoyable title from the developer LaserDog, very well put together, clearly crafted with lots of love from people that are very passionate about what they do because each level has been put to fine detail and there is no last minute things they've just added and tacked on. Everything has been thought out and everything has been done together to create both unique levels, interesting challenges and provide a smooth flow through the game. Also in terms of music, the chiptune soundtrack is phenomenally well put together and you unlock new soundtrack as you progress through the game. And while this at the start means you're listening to the same soundtrack on repeat, once you unlock a couple of soundtracks, this really does improve the thematic feel of the game with pulse pounding action quite a bit. Overall, Hopiko is a very cool platformer, twitch based puzzle, speed runner, whatever it might be, if you are into that sort of game. If you're not, then this game is definitely not for you because it doesn't really do anything else than what it advertises on the tin. If you're interested in Hopiko, you can check it out on Steam. It comes out on January 6th and there's a link in the description below for you to look at. So thank you for watching. If you like this video, press the like button below. If you didn't like this video, there's a dislike button for exactly that purpose and leave a comment. Tell us what you liked, tell us what you didn't like, tell us what we can do better. We want to hear back from all of you. And if you want to see more content like this on the channel, just press that subscribe button down below and we will deliver. And until then, I wish you a good day and until next time, right here on Guy Logic.